Hello, my sweet peeps. I hope everybody are good today. So it's another day of advanced vocabulary. And in the end, you're going to have all the vocabularies to express your ideas fluently and confidently. And welcome back to Junto com o Nativo. I'm Sa, and his daddy. Thanks to be one more day with him, with us, daddy. How are nice you to doing you. today? How are you doing, guy? Yes, I'm doing good. Uh, it's a little chilly today. Um, it's good to be here. I I really enjoy these with you guys, and uh, I would like to show you what it's looking like around my house right now, because I know you guys are all melting. At least that's what Saw always tells me. She's melting. So this is my front yard. But yeah, it's all snowy. Can you see that well? Yes. That's and then my backyard. Basically. Oh, wrong one. And it's a little chilly back there, too. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's nice snowy day. So, dressing warm. Anyways, I'm having a great day, and I'm ready to learn some Voc was it vocabularies? <laughs> oh, great. Thank you, Saul, for having me again. And it's good to see all of you back here. Yes, thank you. I really appreciate it. And it's so good to have you again. So let's get started. Let's start with this master class with phrasal verbs and uh, with daddy because as i told you before native speakers love use uh, phrasal verbs and so that is the fifth class already about phrasal verbs and uh, now let's go ahead and uh, talk about that that is the group five already wow so, goes so fast yes can you read for us to tune out <laughs> to stop listening to uh someone because you don't like what they're saying or just because they're your wife and they just do this and you're watching TV. So I'm tuning her out. I just say, uh-huh, uh-huh. She does it to me all the time. So anyways, so to tune out, uh, you just zone out into your own little world to tune out. Not just because you don't like what they're saying, just because you don't care what they're saying. <laughs> so, okay, Saw, so you can take over. Yes, this number I want to turn out, as he said, uh, this is a very useful phrasal verb because it's used to say, you stop listening to someone, you stop paying attention to them, because you don't like what they are saying, basically. So you tune someone out. This is something that kids do all the time with the, their parents, right? If your parent uh, giving you advice and you don't want to hear, you just tune them out. So your parents, stop but you just not listening them so you can just say i always turn out my mom when she 
gives me relationship advice. Yes. So in a workplace situation, for example, let's say the coworker that sits beside you is just a very negative person and complains a lot to you, might just, just simply tune them out. So you stop listening to them because you don't want to hear all that negativity and complaining. So you are not listening, yes? You just tune them out. They So they are talking, but you are not listening. Them, yes? <laughs> the next, daddy. <laughs> They keep a knocking, but you can't come in. <laughs> <laughs> to tick off, to annoy, anger, or just irritate, to piss me off. We've used that one before, yes? To tick off. Um, when you, when someone just keeps nagging at you about something, and it just keeps getting worse. And pretty soon you're like, you better quit it. You're ticking me off. You don't want to do that. Because then you see Raya Smash. So then you could do, um, I don't know. Yeah, just ticking me off, making me angry, irritating. Go ahead, Saw. Take over. Yes, that's eat so uh this number two to tick off this is a useful one because it means to annoy to anger or to irritate now we use this in two very specific sentence structure it takes someone off it uh, ticks me off when my coworker doesn't help. So it ticks someone off and then you explain the situation that causes the anger, the frustration or the irritation. Now, the other sentence structure is just to say someone or something ticks me off. John really ticks me off. He's so negative. John really irritates me. Frustrates me. Annoys me. John really ticks me off. He's so negative. But I just tune, tune him out. Hmm. Yeah. Or he's going to tick me off. To talk up, to talk down, to talk up. So to talk up, to speak about someone or something in a very beneficial, positive way. It's very good to do. It's always good to do. And even yourself, just not too much of yourself. But yes, to talk it up. Or you can even say talk it up. You can talk, uh, you can talk up your house, you can talk someone up, you can talk up your car. Mm. But yeah, talk up your city, your, you can talk up anything. Positive is a great thing to have, positivity. Okay, so. Oh yeah, to be positive, it's really good for sure. Yes. So this uh, is another one. Yes. And Daddy already told you about to talk up. And you talk someone or something up. And that means you speak in a way that makes that someone or something sound uh, really beneficial, really positive really amazing 
maybe even more so than the reality. So let's say you're in sales and you're trying to sell this piece of software to a company. Well, you're going to talk about that software. You're going to talk about that software in a way that really highlights positive features and you um, probably want to mention in the neg uh, the negative features you don't want to mention so we're going to talk it up or let's say that your really close friend applied for a job in your company well you 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 probably talk uh, up your friend. You speak about your friend very enthusiastically, very positively. Yes, because you want your friend to get this job. You're going to talk up about your friend. Number right. four. For sure. You don't want to talk negative about your friend, do you? To pile up. To pile it up. To pile up. Dog pile. Did you guys ever do that when you were kids? Uh, I remember dad doing that with us. Or we'd do it to dad. But pile it up. My bills are piling up. I just can't seem to catch up. Squish. Uh, pile it up. The leaves are piling up in the front yard during fall. That's for sure. But I got to go make them a bigger pile. Yeah, to pile it up. The playing football, they pile up in a big old pile. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Saw. So you can take over. Okay, so uh, do you have a pile up of dishes in your kitchen today? No? <laughs> no, I got to take care of. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. I know you You always do the dishes, yes? In time? In time before it's too big of a pile. <laughs> dishes in my kitchen. Yes, good. So uh, just to play a little bit. And this number four, to pile up. This means simply to increase and am in, in amount. We generally use this uh, about work. In, gen in general, you could say work is really piling up work. Mm -hmm. work is increasing in amount you can use this with a specific word so you might say my expense reports are piling up or even if uh, with household chores chores you might uh, say the laundry is piling up the dirty dish are piling up they're yeah. increasing the amount yes okay not mop it's mope you put mope i was reading it as mop earlier i was like mop no mope oh <laughs> i was reading it wrong to mope around like do you ever watch winnie the pooh and you got Eeyore? I know. I'll get <laughs> it done. <laughs> yes. Smoking around, yes. The, the, the movie, yes, you're talking about. The, yeah, the cartoon. Back yeah, the yeah. we used to watch. What is the name? The cartoon's name? Winnie, Winnie the Pooh. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know why no one wanted to play with Piglet? Because he was always yes. like Pooh. 
Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, so, that's a funny one. to mope around when you're upset or depressed or just feeling down, but you're letting it just hang around all the time and you're just now moping around, feeling sorry for yourself. To move around in an unhappy, lazy, or disappointed way. Like Eeyore. I know. My tail's missing again. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, to mope around. <laughs> Go ahead, so. Yes, good, good. Huh? Yep. Yes, this number five, to mope around. Uh, to mope around. This is when someone moves from one location to another, but they do it in a very unhappy way, a lazy way, a disappointed way. And it's generally because something is wrong. Something specific is wrong. So maybe they just lost their job or they, they just broke up with their girlfriend. So they mope around the house. All day they go from the couch to the kitchen, back to the couch, but they look really upset and lazy and no energy. So this is, isn't really a positive thing. We just say, stop moping around you need to stop moping around and stop uh, and uh, and uh, looking for a job that is what it means moping around when you lost your job stop moping around and uh, and look for some new job and everything yes go ahead daddy that was good good job you need to go look for a job and stop moping around. Get a haircut, too. <laughs> yes. Take a shower, too. To loosen up. <laughs> Just oh, loosen up. Get ready to go on a hike. Loosen up. Let's get going here. We got things to do. Just loosen up. To become more relaxed on or comfortable. Less serious, not so serious. You say, why so serious? I like to loosen up. You got to loosen up before these little classes too, so we can uh, teach y'all how to speak English. So we loosen up. Go ahead, go ahead, Saw. Oh, so good, yes. More relaxed, yes. There's this number six to loosen up. This is a great one for me. It means to be more relaxed, more comfortable, or less serious. So you might say she was very shy at first, but then she loosened up. Yes, so she became more relaxed, more comfortable. Now we often use this as advice to someone. If someone is just being too serious, you might say, loosen up. It's similar to saying, relax a little, L relax a little, L loosen up. You need to loosen up. Oh, just loosen up. Okay. Yeah, that was good. To kick off in the Super Bowl, they did the kickoff at the beginning. It was great. To get something kick started or kick off, it's to get something going. Uh, kick started my engine. So we got a good kickoff for the day. Uh, let's get this day started. Let's get this day kicked oh, off. Yes. Yeah. Let's get this day kicked off. But yeah, 
It's basically just getting things started, getting going, light a fire under your butt. Let's go. Put my foot up your no. Go ahead, so take go. <laughs> Great. So and Daddy is a creative person because he always talking to uh he knows the the topic um a little just a little before but even he mentioned some examples ideas and it, that's really contribute to uh students knowledge and that's amazing yes because an american person talking yes can talk always about what he lives and he he uses a lot of those uh, words because it's uh, what they, they like. I always say in each sentence they use a phrase of verb. So that's one, the number seven to kick off. This is a great one because when you kick something off, it means you start, but we use this in the context of a sport event, a meeting, a conference, or even the party. So some sort of event with people. So in sports, it's very common to say the game, the match kicks off at and then you say the time. The match kicks off at three. The game kicks off at seven. And that's just when the game starts. Now, you could also say, let's kick off the meeting. Bye. And then you can explain how we are going to start the meeting. Let's kick off the meeting by introducing the new CFO. Or let's keep, kick off the meeting by sharing the goods. Mm -hmm. Next, number eight. Horse around. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I would like to make this sound and you did. To horse around to behave in a silly way. Yours or Betty. Betty. I like to horse around. I like to wrestle around with you. Um, yeah, to horse around. I always horse around with the kids. Or when I was younger, I we horse around in the yard with our friends. It's goof around, play around, uh, rough house. Let's see what other, it's all about the same play. Um, yeah, just kind of play in a more of a rough manner. I guess I would say. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you are really good on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so anything else? Okay. Anything else to, to add about two horse around? Fire it up, 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 fire it up. I'm on fire. <laughs> yes, so uh this number eight, this is a fun one to horse around. When you horse around, you behave in a silly or noisy way. So basically, what children do all the time, they horse around. But you might say, the kids were horsing around and they broke my favorite vase. Now, Although this is commonly used in children, of course, you can use it for adults as well, because adults act in silly and noisy way all the time, right? 
goof around. Even in the workplace co uh, context, uh, for example, how your team is constantly harsing around, and as a bonus, you can say goofing around. It's an alternative, but both are very commonly used. So horse around or goof around. Mm. You can use it. So perfect. Good job, Scott. Thank you. To get by. To get by to have just enough money. I'm just gonna squeak by by the hair of my chin. Just get by. I'll get by, you say. And someone asks you, well, how are things doing out there? I'm getting by. All right. Well, do you think you'll make it? Oh, yeah, I'll get by. No. <laughs> yeah. Just to have enough of or anything, really, to survive. To get through. Yeah. Go ahead, Saw. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Your explanation. At the, this number nine and the examples that you give to us. Uh, this number nine to get to buy, this is when you have just enough money to, to live on, but not very much extra. So you can basically pay all your bills and that's about it so you might say since our twins were born it's been more difficult to get by you have two new babies in the house well first congratulations but of course that's very expensive so now you only have enough money to pay your bills, to buy the food, buy the diapers, <laughs> buy the groceries, pay your mortgage, uh, things like that we're getting by. We're getting by, we just surviving. So if someone knows you're going through a tough time financially maybe lost your job and they ask you how it's going if it's everything okay you could say well i'm getting by i'm getting by which lets them know you're surviving you're having enough to pay all your car expenses yes daddy could you read it first those examples again yeah uh, so to get by to have just enough money to survive or just enough food to get by through the winter but not much more since the twins were born i now live at the bar just kidding <laughs> since the twins were born it's been more difficult to get by but we're getting by. Well, I'm getting by. I'm living at the bar now. <laughs> Just, I don't know. Just Twins would be tough. Twins. Oh, triplets, yes. I would flip out. I'm just kidding. To flip out. To... Oh, did uh, your next one was supposed to be similar to this one, wasn't it? You can just do them both at the same time. Yeah. To flip out, to become very excited or to become very angry. Yeah. I'm flipping out here. I don't know what to do. Water's coming from everywhere. Except for the sky. Oh, I'm flipping out. I'm wigging out. It's another word you can use. Wigging out. Oh, good. Yeah, we can out. Yeah, this dog is making me flip out. She just drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, so. So you have a dog, you can say that. 
Yeah. Rox is calm already. Old. Old dog. <laughs> yeah, she don't make me feel bad. No. Yes, so this uh and finally the number 10 to flip out. Yes. Now this can mean to become very excited. But it can also mean to become the opposite, very angry, agitated. So it's when you have a big emotion, that emotion can be positive, excitement, or it can be negative, anger, or it will be a obvious based on a context. So if you just won a competition or a prize or the lottery, you might flip out and become very, very excited, right? The sports team flip it out when they won the gold medal or the team flipped out when they lost. Yes, so really the opposite. They lost the game. The team be became very angry. So you can use it in both situations. And for this expression, you can also say freak out, freak out, flip out. They mean the same and again, positive excitement or negative anger. Are you ready now? Are you ready now for your final quiz? So here are the questions. Of course, hit pause. Take as much time as you need. And you, when you're ready, hit play. And I share the answers. So you can go ahead and hit pause now. Here are the answers. Go ahead and hit pause and figure out how you did. Amazing job with phrasal verbs. But like I said, native speakers, they love using phrasal verbs. And there's a lot more than 50 that I shared American vocabulary. So let's keep going. Let's keep learning 50 more phrasal verbs in the next class. So you can do so uh, everything again, complete again, and you move on in the next class. And you'll be like that. So don't forget to subscribe. Yes, Daddy? Yes. Yes, for sure. And I hope to see you all tomorrow. And I am enjoy this wonderful day that we have. And thanks for coming. And... Uh, Hope you learned something today. Thank you, Saul, for having me again. Oh, thanks, Daddy. Yes. Uh, for your company, for your help, for all your examples. And I really appreciate and uh, all followers, company, students. And uh, good luck for you guys in our studies. And don't forget to subscribe, to comment, uh, and uh, and. Uh, See you tomorrow in our next video. For now, it's that. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. See you. Mm -hmm.